I've been wanting to make a video on this mod for a long time now, but every time I wanted to, KeepRL got an update, and I couldn't cover it anymore until it got updated for the new version. Finally, I got my timing right, and I can play this masterpiece of a mod again. The mod is called Expanded World A32 by Sir Dialot. And don't confuse it with another mod on the Steam Workshop with a very similar name, which is just called Expanded World. That's not the right one. This mod does a lot of stuff, far more than I wish to cover in this video, but just briefly, it makes the maps bigger, adds new enemies, new crafting recipes, new resources, and a bunch of new and interesting keepers. The one I'll be focusing on today is the Lich Keeper. The Lich starts the game with a handful of skeleton miners. These skeletons can move in the sunlight and operate during the day. Your very first minions will be the Necro Servants. These are humans that have a very balanced skill set. They're okay in melee combat, as well as being able to learn and cast basic spells. They're also good craftsmen at the workshop and the forge, so you can put them to work making armor for your minions. A wonderful thing about this mod is that you require corpses to get minions, so until you go and kill some stuff and take some corpses back to a grave, you will not have any undead options. Your necro servants can be used to kill some hapless villagers and local wildlife. Then the skeleton miners can haul those corpses back to the base for you, and then zombie immigration will be unlocked. You're able to have an unlimited amount of zombie miners. They're kind of weak, but they're also kind of strong. They have the swarmer attribute, which makes them stronger when they're in large groups. So your zombie miners can be killed pretty easily when caught alone, but when you dress them in decent equipment, and have lots of them. They're more than capable of defending themselves, and can even be used defensively. I usually have about 100 zombie miners, and having so many of them really makes mining and resource gathering a breeze. In addition to the zombie miners, other zombie units can be made. One kind of zombie per humanoid race, like zombie goblins, gnomes, humans, dark elves, dwarves, etc. And these zombies possess the skills they had in life. For example, zombie goblins are also capable crafters just like living goblins, and can be used to craft items in the workshop, forge laboratory, and jeweler. Zombie dark elves and orcs, as well as standard human zombies, are pretty much just for combat. The best zombies for combat are zombie adventurers, zombie minotaurs, and zombie cyclops. The zombie minotaurs and cyclops are insanely strong when properly equipped, but also pretty rare. The problem with zombies is that they're extremely vulnerable to sunlight, and also very slow. So if you're not careful, they can perish in the sunlight. The AI keeps them inside or underground during the day, but it doesn't factor in how much time they need to get back to base. I lose about 20 zombie miners each day because they get caught outside and burn up, but they're easily replaced so it doesn't matter much. There are ways to use zombies during the day. Units like Shades have a constant aura of darkness surrounding them, so they can provide a kind of artificial light for your army. Your necromancers can also learn spells that allow them to create fields of artificial darkness, but I find it best to keep my zombies inside and then go attack people with them at night. During the day you can use your other minions like skeletons and your living troops like necromancers and occultists. Zombies are still the bulk of your army though. When corpses are left to rot, they become bones. You can collect bones to make skeletons with. The most basic of these are the Skeleton Servant, which is a warrior, and the Dredge, which is a crafter. The Dredge is extremely proficient in making equipment, even more so than zombie goblins. Skeleton mages can be recruited and they're elementalists. You might get a fire one that can throw fireballs, or a frost one that throws frost bolts, or perhaps something else as well. They're good minions. Ancient skeletons appear to be the toughest of the skeleton warriors, and are high value troops. They're weaker than zombie minotaurs and cyclopses, but stronger than all the other zombie types. They can also do some pretty good crafting. There's a skeleton called the Bone Lee, which is some kind of kung fu skeleton. It fights using its fists and legs, and won't ever use equipment of any kind. It prefers to be naked, but it has a bunch of interesting abilities. They can break free of spiders webs shatter the arms of enemies, hamstring enemies, and a lot more. You can also make skeleton miners and skeleton imp miners which come in swarms for one population slot. 
They also have avoidant AI, unlike skeleton and zombie miners, so they tend to stay alive better. There's multiple kinds of vampire units on offer. The basic vampire is a high quality unit and has a bunch of spells it can learn like invisibility, making mirror images of itself, short distant teleport, and some other things. Vampire Lords are the same, just stronger, and have access to better magic. And Vampire Masters are the strongest of all, and have a spell arsenal almost as good as a spellcaster unit, while still being a great warrior. The main issue with vampires is that they perish in the sunlight, just like zombies. Other undead units on offer are mummies, ghouls, shades, wisps, liches, and zombie rats. I can't tell you too much about these because I haven't had the opportunity to use them much, aside of shades, which have the permanent darkness around them, and are also capable of necromancy magic. Shades can summon temporary skeletons, and also other shades to help them, so they're a pretty awesome unit. Ghouls are a bit like zombies that can operate during the day. Mummies are sort of like zombies, vulnerable to sunlight, but they're also stronger than zombies, although not as strong as zombie minotaurs and cyclopses. Wisps are strange units. One of my wisps is the heaviest hitter in my entire crypt, dealing 76 damage, which is actually insane. This is more than zombie minotaurs and cyclopses, but all my other wisps have been pretty weak. They're typically fast flying units and they're capable of casting simple necromancy spells like raising skeletons. Liches are your most powerful mages and have a huge amount of magic to draw upon. They can summon lots and lots of temporary minions, as well as use all kinds of direct damage spells and deception magic. They're kind of like a necromancer, skeleton mage and vampire all rolled into one and then buffed a little. Finally we come to your living human minions. These are useful because of their ability to operate during the day as well as being able to learn lots of spells. Your simplest ones are the necro servants I mentioned before, which are all rounders, and occultists. While necro servants are decent troops and also capable craftsmen, occultists are purely for warfare. They cannot craft stuff, but they have access to more spells. Most of their magic revolves around debuffing, but they can also heal and regrow lost limbs, and have access to some generic spells like magic missile and teleportation. Occultic knights are like occultists on steroids. They have more spells and are also better soldiers. They're at least as strong as ancient skeletons, making them stronger than most warrior zombies, so they're definitely nice to have. Dread knights are heavily armoured warriors. They're kind of like death knights. I've unfortunately not been able to get many in my current playthrough, but I have used them in the past and I know that they're very good. Lastly we have the necromancers. Necromancers are useful in combat and come with some nice spells to summon temporary minions. They can summon skeletons, shades, and vampires. They can also create darkness to protect undead from light and debuff enemies to make them more susceptible to your other minions. They're hopeless in melee and also have a surprisingly small spell pool. Occultists have more spells and more variety in their magic, but necromancers can certainly summon the strongest temporary minions. They also look awesome in their black robes. There's some other things I'd like to say about the mod before I give it its score. There are some really cool new items to be crafted. Shadow torches can be made from bones and they provide darkness. Give every zombie one of these and they can operate during the day. Scrolls can be crafted that grant access to necromancy spells like summon shade. Plate armor can be crafted, which is a nice upgrade over the standard chain armor. It is as strong as basic adamantite armor, but much more affordable. And then if you want someone to be mega defended, you can craft adamantite plate armor. Tomes can be crafted to give limited access to the corresponding school of magic. For example, a necromancy tome grants the unit advanced raised skeletons, and a plague book lets them spread the plague. Undead units are immune to plague, and your necroservants, occultic knights, and necromancers are resistant to it. Unfortunately, your basic occultists have no resistance to it. In any case, you can spread the plague to enemies and it is a contagious damage over time effect that can kill units with no ability to heal themselves and severely weaken the ones that can. You can also make crossbows, which is cool because I like crossbows. Skeletons can be crafted. I haven't tried it due to a lack of resources all the time, so I don't know how it works. In order to enjoy Keeper RL these days, I really need good mods like this one. I'm giving Expanded World A32 a perfect score, 10 out of 10. I really like it and it satisfies everything I'm looking for in a necromancy game. 
It provides lots of useful, diverse, and permanent minions. I can't fault it. Keep in mind that this mod is so much more than the Lich Keeper. It adds much more to the game than what I mentioned, and some of the other keepers are really cool too, like the Enchanter, who deals with golems, floating swords, and enchanted weapons and things of that nature, as well as upgradable constructs like the Catapult and Thrasher, which are slow moving but powerful machines. The Cultist is all about Lovecraftian stuff, and the Demon King is a demon faction. There's also Barbarian, Druidus, Evil King, Senator, Bugbear, and Ethereal. The Ethereal are aliens, and you can make use of strange alien technology like mechs and brain tanks, as well as weird alien life forms like giant worms. Thanks for watching, I've got more videos and necromancy stuff coming soon.